At this time, I would like to turn it over to um, Katie Sullivan, Principal Deputy Assistant Attorney General for the Department of Justice, Office of Justice Programs, who is one of the co-chairs of the task force, and she will begin today's consultation. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Katie Sullivan. Uh, as Michelle just kindly said, I run the Office of Justice Programs at the Department of Justice, and um, Attorney General Barr did ask that I be his representative as a co-chair for this very important task force known as Operation Lady Justice. I would also introduce uh, my co-chair is uh, Assistant Secretary Tara Sweeney from uh, the Department of Interior, and uh, she is Secretary David Bernhardt's uh, uh, designee. We work very closely together um, pursuant to the President's executive order. Before we begin today's consultation, I would like to take a moment for each of us to say a silent prayer. And thank you all. I know um, for me, I always uh, pray and wish that the consultation is, that this government to government consultation um, does help us with our trust responsibility to you, um, that we do have open-mindedness, willingness, and and a real engagement. And I am very grateful for everyone who joined the consultation and is on the call today. So thank you. We have representations um, on, the consultant, on the consultation today from all of the agencies who make up the task force. That include the Department of the Interior, the Office of Justice Programs, uh, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the Office on Violence Against Women, uh, the BJA Office of Justice Services, the Attorney General's Native American Issues Subcommittee, I'm sorry, it's the BIA Office of Justice Services, Charles Addington, sorry, Charles, um, the Attorney General's Native American Issues Subcommittee, and the Department of Health and Human Services Administration for Native Americans. We are very fortunate today to also have representation from the White House through the Domestic Policy Council and the Office of Intergovernmental Affairs. It is my great privilege to introduce uh, Deputy Assistant to the President, Jenny Lichter, from the White House Domestic Policy Council to make some remarks. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you very much, Katie. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. I am here, first of all, just to thank you on behalf of the President and our White House Operation Lady Justice team for devoting some time this afternoon to being with us for this important discussion. For most of the session, as you know, the floor will be yours, and our role is really to listen and to learn from all of you speaking on behalf of your communities. We will absolutely take your experiences and your suggestions into account as we continue to build out the federal government's efforts to address the issue of missing and murdered Native Americans, especially women and girls. I'm also going to take just a quick moment here to offer a word of context, offer some background basically for kind of how we got here from the perspective of the White House and the, the President's longstanding commitment to this issue. In May of 2019, President Trump proclaimed Missing and Murdered American Indians and Alaska Natives Awareness Day, becoming the first president ever to do so and saying in that proclamation that ending the violence that disproportionately affects American Indian and Alaska Native communities is imperative. That proclamation gave our team our, our initial marching orders, so to speak. So we spent the next few months thinking through and talking with tribal communities about how to put uh, some action behind those words. And last fall, just before Thanksgiving, President Trump hosted a signing ceremony in the Oval Office for an executive order establishing Operation Lady Justice, which, as you all know, is an interagency task force, which Katie described all the components who are involved, charged with developing an aggressive government-wide strategy to address the crisis of missing and murdered persons in Native communities. This session today, of course, is part of the implementation program for that order. The president and this whole team are committed to and really passionate about following up on that executive order 
with, with action and real tangible progress. But of course, in the intervening months since the executive order signing in late November, the COVID-19 pandemic and the resulting public health concerns and travel restrictions have changed our plans fairly significantly and have limited the types of activities we've been able to engage in. We so wish that we could be with all of you in person to discuss this, this uh, sometimes difficult topic face-to-face. Um, but of course, that's not that's not possible right now. And our partners at the Department of Justice and Department of Interior have worked really hard to keep open lines of communication during this time, despite some of the the limitations, and to keep moving forward despite the unexpected turns this year has taken. We're really grateful for their hard work, and again, we are really grateful for your presence today for this virtual consultation. You have the commitment of the White House that we will continue to drive forward with our agency partners to make a difference on this issue, informed first and foremost by what we hear from you today and from others in, in the other, uh, other sessions that we're holding in the next few weeks. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. And again, thanks for joining us this afternoon. Back over to you, Katie. Thank you, Jenny. Uh, as uh, just to add on to what Jenny said, uh, pursuant to the President's Task Force and this a huge administration commitment. Um, we must consult with tribes on the scope and nature of the issues regarding missing or murdered American Indians and Alaskan Natives. We have had a series of in-person listening sessions. We had a series of in-person consultations and listening sessions that were set uh, between February and July across the country. Of course, because of um, different restrictions in the country regarding travel and visitors. Uh, we were able to ultimately host five in-person listening sessions um, and now also an additional four virtual listening sessions at the end of May and beginning of June. We did think it was very important to continue our work um, and hold these more formal consultations we have 12 uh, virtual tribal consultations scheduled over the next month, and they are organized by uh, Bureau, the Bureau of Indian Affairs region. The Deer Tribal Leader letter and framing paper were distributed on July 17th and again on August 11th. In addition, the series of virtual consultations was widely publicized around the country. And the consultation questions are organized across four areas to encourage discussion about issues in your communities. The scope of the problems of missing or murdered, the challenges your communities face, what solutions or resources you have or are needed, and what specific recommendations do you have to address or curtail the incidences of missing persons or murdered cases within American Indian and Alaskan Native communities. As you know, um, in this government to government uh, uh, consultations and with our trust responsibility, we cannot do this without your input. And so at this point, I will turn it over so we can listen to our tribal leaders and designees uh, that have signed up to speak at this consultation. Thank you very much. Hi, thank you, Katie. Uh, we do have tri two tribal leaders and or a tribal leader and a designee that are um, registered to speak. However, we are not finding them listed um, on the attendee list. So we are going to mute all the individual lines or unmute, excuse me, to see if you're on the call. Um, it will take us a little bit of time to get through um, all the individuals who, that are muted. So please be patient. Um, if you are one of the people that are supposed to speak or and offer testimony and you have the ability to access a computer right now, if you could go ahead and log in through WebEx, we can go ahead and we'll be able to identify you at that time. Um, our, the first pe person that is supposed to speak is Nita Batiste. Um, so um, if you are on the line, please you may begin your, um, your testimony. Um, again, we are going to systematically go through the list of individuals and try to unmute everybody, it will take a little bit of time to get that completely finished. Um, we appreciate your patience. And it looks like at this point in time, 
all callers are unmuted. So, Nita, if you are present, you may go ahead and begin your testimony. Nita Batiste, um, yes. if you are on Nita the call, Batiste. you may. Great, wonderful, thank you. You um, please state your name and your tribal um, affiliation, as well as your title. Okay, I was. Okay, I'm on now. I'm sorry, I was talking away. My apologies. Uh, okay, can you go ahead. Oh, okay. You may begin. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much. My apologies. Um, my name is Anita Batiste. I serve my people, the Alabama Cushara Tribe of Texas, on Tribal Council in the Officer position of Secretary. Um, what I would like to share right now, it'll be very um, short. However, I will be sending a written testimony. In this time and age, which find us not only uh, developing a new normal, if we ever considered a normal before, our concern here in my area is the almost the self isolation of our people. And when that when that happens, we have a uh, higher incidence of abuse. We have higher incidence of uh, uh, missing or, or uh, they will say they're out and about. Um, I would like to, I have been listening in on the NCAI VAWA task forces, which I proudly serve. Where there is much frustration because I feel as if we are trying to re reinvent a wheel that has been developed, but yet it is sitting idle. It is my hope that we can, with this task force, with Operation Lady Justice, that we can all come together on a common ground with common interests and to engage all the individuals, all the pioneers who have been leading this charge for so, so many years. This, all, this is what I have to offer. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nita. We will go to our next caller. Um, again, that individual is not listed um, as being dialed in. So we are going to unmute each person. And Olivia Gray, if you are on the call, you may begin your testimony um, as soon as we get all the attendees unmuted. So Olivia Gray, if you are on the call, you may begin your testimony. Olivia Gray, we have unmuted your line. Um, if your telephone itself is muted, please unmute it and you can begin your testimony. All right, we do not have a response from Olivia. Um, therefore, I don't believe that she has called into the, the meeting, to the consultation. That is, those are the only um, people we have registered that wanted to offer oral testimony. Okay, thank you very much, Michelle. And if you could put the Operation Lady Justice uh, contact information slide up. Um, Operation Lady Justice does have a website and an email address. Both are listed here on this slide, which we'll leave up for a minute. If you would uh, like to receive updates from Operation Lady Justice, please subscribe to the website. and. Please also know to everyone on the call and for everyone in your tribes, we are receiving written comments through September 30th of 2020 uh, on these topics and the framing paper. They can be sent to the Operation Lady Justice website. I wanna thank everyone who called in and I appreciate Nita very much your testimony. So thank you very much. Have a great day.